Hey there YouTube, Arbonus69 here, and today we're going to have a look at flexible filament. Well, more specifically, flexible filament on my CTC 3D printer. Now, before we get into this, all the details for all the filaments I've used from Rigid Ink are linked down below. If you want to get your own, by all means, hit them up, buy some filament. It is very, very good stuff. I highly recommend it. Now, the reason I say Rigid Ink is because I'm based in the UK and the company is based in the UK. It just makes my life so much easier ordering the filament. There's no import taxes, no crap like that to deal with. It's just easy. So anyway, um, back to the issue at hand. Can a CTC 3D printer print flex filament? Well, the short answer is yes, it can. And here we have a little green octopus that I have printed. And as you can see, his legs bend and he is squishy. So, question is, how did I get to this? Well, first of all, the 3D printer that I use um, has been slightly modified, so we'll go and have a look at my 3D printer to find what modifications I made to enable printing of flexible filaments easier. So here we can see the printer carriage for my CDC 3D printer. As you can see, I've got a cooling fan installed. This is one of the things that you will need for printing with flex filament. The second thing is, I don't know if you can quite see here or not, but um, the drive block feed part is actually blue. Now this is because this is one of the major upgrades I've done to my 3D printer. Now what I'll do is I'll strip the hot end down and we'll have a quick closer look at this. So now with the um, drive block stripped down on the one side you can see the blue plastic part of the new drive feed block. Now this is printed in blue PLA plastic. Um, it doesn't seem to heat up too badly. Um, it seems to withstand the printing process quite fine. I run one on the, uh, on the other side in black PLA and that's been printing plastic for quite a while now and I've never had any issues with it. The one thing you will notice is just on the side here there is a spring. This helps keep tension as you can see against the drive wheel so it keeps the filament pushed up against the very very fine teeth of the fine wheel and allows it to feed through the tube down at the hot end and it doesn't seem to bundle up or bunch up and it does a very very good job with flexible filament. Now this drive block isn't my own this is somebody else's design so if you would like to do this for your printer there are details down below, uh, the files are on Thingiverse for free. By all means check it out, download it, print it and do it. The only problem I found was getting a spring. The details for the spring are on the details page for the actual print itself. I managed to get a box of springs dirt cheap at Maplin before they shut down in the UK here. So that's the only part I had an issue with, everything else was easy enough to source. Right, I shall reassemble this hot end again and uh, we'll have a look at the prints. So here's the octopus that I printed in Flex PLA from Rigid Ink. Now this isn't my design, it's somebody else's. If you want to check it out and do your own, feel free. The files are on Thingiverse and I will stick the details down below. Now when printing with flexible filament, it's advised that you start at a slow speed of around about 15 millimeters a second and with a fairly high temperature, around 240. So I followed the uh, instructions, turned retraction off, etc. And this was the first result I got. Now, as you can see, the print itself does have some blobs on the arms and there's a fair bit of stringing so that was telling me that the temperature was far too high and it was oozing a lot. It is bendy and it is squishy somewhat. I did print this with 20% infill as I wasn't too sure how well it would handle a hollow model but the bottom came out really well and very very smooth. So that's the, the first attempt. Now what I will do after I've shown you all the other ones is we'll have a look at how well these clean up with a pair of flush cuts to see if it's possible to clean the prints up. So that was the first attempt. The second attempt, this one was done at 20 millimeters a second and I turned the temperature down to 235 with a bed temp of 50 and again, no retraction. But still we can see there's still a lot of stringing on the, on the arms and um, there's a few blobs, although if we compare it to the previous model, here's the one that was printed at a higher temperature, you can see that the blobs have reduced somewhat. So we're starting to get there, we're getting in the region, and I reduced the infill to 10% so this is a bit more squishy, and when you do squish it, when you do squish, there is no breaking in the layers, so we're good. So anyway, as I said, this is running a little bit on the hot side, so I've reduced the temperature down. Um, keeping the speed at 20 millimeters a second, we're down at 230 degrees, a bed of 50, and again with no retraction. So we can still see there's still a fair amount of stringing on the actual model itself. Um, the blobs have reduced a little bit, not a great deal. Um, and again, this is printed with 10% infill. And again, it is still squishy, and the layers do hold together. So 
So again, 20 millimeters a second at temperature this time of 220 with a bed of 50. And again, there this time there is very, very few blobs on the arms. There's one just here, but that is about it for the blobs. And um, there's still a bit of stringing. So I figure at this point it's probably down to retraction. And there's still no layers uh, separation when we, we squish, so the temperatures are right. So again, I said I think this one's down to retraction. So what I did this time, kept the speed at 20 again, dropped the temperature down to 210 as a trial and enabled retraction, just a small amount, because it's not advisable to use retraction on uh, flexible filament from what I've read. But as we can see, there's very, very little stringing on this. There's hardly any blobs. And it looks fairly good. These are all printed at 0.2 millimeter height. And again, it is still squishy. And the layers don't separate when squashed. Arms are still flexible. And flick back into shape. So we are good, and we are getting there. Now the next attempt I did was the same settings again, but this time a hollow model. So you can still, we've still got some stringing on the arms, etc. There's no blobs, but this is completely hollow and is extremely squashy. And as we see, we can squash it and the layers don't break and don't separate. In fact, we can bend it in half and it just pops back into shape again. There we go. These are brilliant. I love flex filament. It's my new favorite. So at this point, I was relatively happy with the, uh, the quality of prints I was getting. Left it overnight, came back the next morning and figured I'll give it one more try. We'll change the settings a little bit further and see if we can get a slightly better print. So my last print, admittedly, I reduced the model a little bit further in size. Um, this one was printed at 30 millimeters a second. I reduced the nozzle to 200, um, left the bed at 50, and I had a half a mil retraction and a speed of 30 mil, uh, millimeters a second retraction on this one. And as you can see, there is hardly any stringing on this and hardly any blobs on the arms whatsoever. So I think, to be honest, these are the settings I will be using uh, now on in for my flexible filament prints. This one does have infill again, it's 10%, which is why it's a little bit harder to squish. But there we are. In conclusion, yes, you can print flexible filament on a CTC 3D printer. Right, as I said, this is the first model I printed which had a lot of blobs on the uh, legs, etc. So I've got a pair of flush cuts and we're going to see how well these clean up, if at all. Let's see if it is possible to clean up a flexible filament. It's a bit, uh, a bit tricky to do, but looking at this, with a bit of patience, you can trim these off and make the uh, blobs disappear. So there we can see some of the blobs are being cut off. It's not perfect, it's not brilliant. I dare say if I spent more time, you possibly could clean this up a lot better. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky to get in with the, uh, the flush cuts. You can see me cutting my fingers here. So there we are, that is Squishy Octopus printed on my MakerBot clone CTC 3D printer. And this is purely for my own uh, trial and error to see if my MakerBot clone printer could print what some people deem as a tricky filament. Now I'll flash my settings up on the bottom here for you to read and have a look if you want. It may not work for your printer, but it will hopefully get you in the ballpark area. And with the advice I've given you so far, hopefully you will be able to print flexible filaments on your CTC printer. Do me a favor, if you enjoyed this video, please smack the thumbs up or the thumbs down button, but please leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of the video. And if you could, mash that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel, it helps out immensely. Until next time, happy printing.